So um, I'm going to call you to come and say what you want to say. Amen. What? Um, I just wanted to say, whilst we were going back and forth about um, the appearance of God and how um, difficult it would be for, for us to be able to stand before his presence, the image that came to me was um, like a warrior, a warrior that's dressed in like an upper and he's got like his uh, uh, sword, he's got lots of you know, lots of instruments and things, and it looks very scary. But this warrior has two children. And, you know, when he's coming like that, he's coming, he's coming towards people. Some people are running away from him just because of the way he looks. He looks scary. He's, he's tall. He's, he's quite huge. And he's got all these dangerous things. He can harm anyone. He's got the power. But then these two young children just come saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy. They're not afraid because they know him. They've lived with him. They have a relationship with him. And so that just came to me as we were going back and forth. And I think that was what made, that was, the relationship made a difference between Moses being able to approach um, the presence of God and in this other people being scared. So the warriors, the warriors' children will not be scared of him because they know him. And, and they're not perfect. The fact that they can come before him and run to him and enter his presence and touch him, that does not mean that these two children are perfect. They know everything. But despite their imperfect uh, nature, their father is their father. Amen. 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 Isn't God good? Yes. Aha. You see, God sees our hearts. He knows the burning questions. He knows. And he knows how to uh, reveal himself. Isn't that so? And that's who he is. You know, I said it earlier on that God does not ask us to go and perfect ourselves. You know, because if you are perfect, you don't need God. It's only God that is perfect. So, because we need God, we know we are not perfect. And he said, we should come just as we are. We know that Israelites at this time, they are not perfect. They were the one asking for cucumber, asking for chicken, asking for all kinds of things to eat. Because God now gave them what we call um, the quill. Aha. Uh -huh. They never said, ah, why? We are tired of this quill now. No, no, they are not perfect. But God said, one day he knows that when they come to his presence, amen, he can take us from there and make us to be like him. Amen. So, like father, like son, like daughter, like, like mother, like daughter, whatever we could put it. But even deeper than that, amen. amen. He knows us. Not only that, he made us. We sang this song, but let me go to the one before we sang last, that he made us for himself or something like that, yeah. for his glory. What does that mean? He God says that he made us for his glory. How, how do you interpret that? He made us to display his splendor in our lives, individually and collectively. He wants to demonstrate his power. Why? Because the enemy thought he had everything. Because he has taken it from Adam. Amen. And that's okay. I will show you that I am God here. Even those people you, you thought that you were ruling over them, I have put you under their foot. Isn't that so? 
Or am I reading another Bible? Isn't that what Jesus did for us? So he has given us that power, that authority. Well, you see, you cannot use that authority apart from him. Or else we misuse the authority. He wants us to use this in his counsel, in his will. You remember John and his brother said, Oh Lord, some people are um, praying in your name or casting them. Do you want us to go and call fire? And then, what did he say? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the type of power that you're talking about. It's not meant to do harm, not meant to harm anybody. The power of God to us is to help each other. The power of God enables us to love one another. It's not to use the power to overrule other people. It's supposed to work in harmony. Like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are working in harmony. So, God is secure in himself. No matter how much we discuss it here, he is who he is. As the Lion of the tribe of Judah is also the Lamb. Isn't that so? Is also ancient of days. It's also, someone say something like right? Right? Right. 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 right? right morning star. It's also yes. Cabios, that's what is that a whole king of kings means? I don't know. Unquestionable God. Okay. It's unquestionable God. He does not have to answer to anyone. So, it's also the warrior. Mighty warrior. So, it's, it's nothing that we discuss can, but only wants for us to obediently accept what it says to us. There is obedience in it. And that's what the state I want us to get to. Some things may seem, oh, no. This is a bit hard. Yes, it may seem hard to us, but I say all things are what? Possible to That's it. To them that believe. Not to them that are questioning is integrity. We need to ask questions if we don't understand. Fine. But we still need to know that even when we ask the question, I have to obey what it says. And that's very important. That's the end of it. Amen. So if we obey him, it is to our own benefit. Amen. Amen. And that's where we need to get to as children of God. Yes, Brother Tai. I think what you are saying, Pastor, we need to understand yes. that there's some toxic Yes. Once and for all. Why did he not do that? Yes. Yes. He tried to join my book. This God is a salary. It's also. Amen. He does have to move on that path. Yes. Accept it. Yes. Faithfully. Amen. I think before we, we, we came back, um, our members and uh, Brother, we are 
we're sharing something. We're looking at, okay, look at Abraham. God said, go and go and sacrifice your your son, your son. Even say your son, whom you love, your only son, whom you love. So we can see the how God qualified him to know that I know that you love him, but I want you to go and sacrifice him. What does the Bible say about Abraham? It was in the New Testament. They said that um, when God said, when I think who was that? But yesterday, he, he, he only concluded in his heart that God was able to raise him up. Is it also? Yes. So you see, that was his own action. And I said something that, uh, oh, what did I say? Was it? Do you remember? Um, I said something that, um, something is as you. Uh, as a choice. No, not even a choice. I said something then that, um, uh, as a man is, as so he is, something as like that. Thinking. As a man thinketh, yes, sorry. <laughs> As a man thinketh, so he is. Look at what Abraham taught. Somebody else, what would he say? Ah. <laughs> that was what Abraham said. He said, ah, I will go and pray. He said, is this God? Which is true. And I said, look, then do you know God? The analogy that um, uh, so told me was a those two children, daddy, daddy, because it, they know that there's man. It's my father. Isn't that so? Aha! Is God not our father? We say we trust him? Isn't that so? Shouldn't that be our attitude? I'm saying all this so that we can begin to rethink. Okay, I'm coming on. I'm saying also that we can begin to rethink how so much God loves us and, and how he wants us to, that's what it means to depend on someone, that's what it means to believe and trust. Isn't that so? Uh -huh. Do you believe in God? Yes. If you've been saying you believe in God and it's hard for you to accept his word, is that belief? Uh -huh. You see, we can see ourselves, the only to just sit down, think back and say, no, you said this in your word. Wow. Even if I don't understand that I accept it, and I ask Holy Spirit to, to help me. Don't forget, he's our teacher. If you want to know, not you want to be hypocritical about it, if you want to know, genuinely want to know, he's there to help us. Because why? He knows that some things we cannot discern in our physical senses. The things of God are spiritually discerned. And that's what it means to walk in the spirit. Okay, sister. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, but for what you said, I forgot what you have said. You said that those situations in bed that have happened, that is, it's just God. This is because you said then. This yes. is when it's like ultimate says to all that. Yes. Will you trust me? Will you know that I am God, even though this has happened that just in no way it can't be I God. I just believe that me myself personally, I just said, No, you are God. That's all yes. I because any other way to me to hear sin. Just that I believe that this is one of the things that God has to. And every one of us has to come to the light that is this God to you or what do you, what do you think? Because yes. I just have to, to be personal, I just have to God, you are God. I rest my case. Or else, if I say otherwise, I believe I will sin against you. I see it. Okay, sir. The other thing that for us Christians, you need to keep your faith. You have to be a lot of things. Most people. Let's Yes. Yes. 
in the past, there are some control of synonyms. But most people, if you want to serve God well, to be faithful with it, you have to be an optimist. That if somebody come and tell you that this guy is something, think otherwise. So look at the positive side of it. Yes. That's the way to serve God. Faithful. Yes. If you take that out, you've said it. You just make yourself into your own faith. Yes. That's it. It doesn't work. No. So, for you to have to be an optimist. So true. Good in orders. And yes, I'm coming. If someone comes to you and says something about somebody else to you, you don't have to believe them. You have to think of the positive way. Even you will notice that, which I'm not supposed to get to anyway, you will notice that God never condemned anybody. When he did that, he don't condemn them. You will, someone who might think, oh, it's nothing because God has not said anything. He doesn't have to say anything. He's securing himself. They've asked for it. He's going to give them what they asked for. Isn't that so? We don't want God to talk to us. God told them that I had everything they said. And just tell them to move on. You let them go back. You come to me. Even now, Jesus said, He has not come to condemn. Isn't that so? Aha. If the, 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 the judgment time is coming, that's why I say we shouldn't judge each other. When somebody comes and talks about something like that, have you spoken to them about this? Or do you want me to talk to them? Rather than, oh, oh, uh, that's how it does last week, you know, you are already a sinner. Even for accommodating them, you're already a sinner. And I'm full of that. And I've been asking God to forgive me. Because there are times that you don't know all these things. And you walk in them and you think you're a Christian. Not that you're not a Christian, but you're not working right with God. Isn't that so? And then we can use all these things against us. And those are the things we need to realize and understand that this God that we're talking about, no matter what it is, is on our side. It's for our own good. We saw the enemy, he used deceit to get what is ours. Now we have to fight for it. So who's on our side? God, we have to think this way, beloved. We have to see now and, 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 and listen. If God says this is the way I believe in, I may not understand it, but I know that Holy Spirit will inform me, will let me know. That's the way of God. Not to be pessimistic about things, not to be antagonizing what the word of God says. Is it about what I think or is it about what he thinks? We need to ask ourselves. Amen. Amen. So it's about, don't forget it's about him. It's about him. The life that we're living now is for him to live his life through us. So if he's to live his life through me, I have no say. It's what he says that matters. That's where we have to get to. Young people, it's not about you. You've known him good. It doesn't end there. It's living, allowing him to live his life through us. That's what makes us Christians, really. So, Pastor, can you pressure me? I mean, as you said, young one, I'm sure they love to pressure. Yes, of course you can question God. If, 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 if you're not, if you don't, um, you can ask questions. There's nothing wrong in asking questions. You understand me? There's nothing wrong in asking questions. So many times Jesus will say to you, is this what you are seeing within yourself? Isn't that so? When they were thinking of something like, okay, just about the issue of bread or no bread, bringing bread or no bread. 
They were asking this. They were afraid to ask him. He was talking about um, what was talking about? Jesus was talking about something else. Ah, what was it now? Hmm. Uh, about the on living bread. The living bread. I uh, was talking about the Pharisees. The beware of the, the living of the Pharisees. And they were saying, ah, we need big bread. And they were discussing among themselves. They were, hey, is this what you are asking yourself? No, that's not what I meant. So they were scolding themselves that because they didn't bring bread along. They said, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's something totally different. So asking God question is not, I said to us that Holy Spirit is there to help us, isn't that so? Aha! If you see something you don't understand, write it down. Pray about it. As so many times I see something that I don't understand. And I'll be praying until when I get the results. When Holy Spirit will now minister to me, it can do it in so many ways. I may be talking to somebody and the person will just discuss about it and the answer that I want is in that discussion. I say, ah, no, this is it, okay. You know, and, and in so many ways that he can answer that. But Holy Spirit is able, is capable, is there as our teacher, is there as our instructor, our helper, our standby, our comforter, Everything you ever needed is there for us. Amen. Amen. So, Holy Spirit, God placed His Holy Spirit in us to help us to pray. Because uh, we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray or what to pray for. That's why He's there as well to help us in our prayers. Amen. Um, did somebody say what to say now? I don't need to move fast now. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 5. I think that's what we have before we stop. I'm going to read, I'm going to read real quickly. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's um, NIV. Uh, Deuteronomy 5, that's from 22. I, know, I think we've been reading it and we stop. Actually, I'm going to read it quickly. What's up, time? Um, this will be 5 from 22. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to you out of your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of fire at the cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on the two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leaders of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty. And we have heard his voice from the fire. Today, we have seen that a person can live even if God speaks with them. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and survived? 27. Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you, we will listen and obey. That was what they said. Now, Moses was recounting what happened. Amen. Um, the Lord heard you when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard what these people said to you. Everything they said was good, you see, but not condemn them. That's what they want. That's fine by me. So that's good. Oh, 29. You need to read that with the eye of faith. Let's think together. Oh, that their hearts will be inclined to fear me 
and keep all my commandments always so that it might go well with them and their children forever. What do you think of that statement? Hmm? Eternal covenant, yes. Yeah. When it says things that acknowledge God's power and his authority. Yes. Yeah. But why would God say that? Because God loves them. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yes. The heart is feelings. Thank you, ma. I said something the other day. I said, look, that nothing can move him. But when you are expecting someone, when you've been waiting, when you carry them yourself, and you brought them to a place where you want to introduce yourself to them, and they rejected you. You see, he doesn't condemn them. He said, that's fine, baby. Me. That's the God's assignment. He doesn't condemn. We shouldn't, neither should we condemn any other person. But you see, as human beings, we're not healthy. So, oh, that's Oh, I wish that what they have said that they would do it. That's what he's saying. I wish that they can really, really do what they said they would do, that they would not disobey me. Already disobeyed him, but they want another way. Isn't that so? Let's look at it again. Oh, that their heart will be inclined. What does that mean? To fear me. You see, the, he has been moved to listen to me there now. Did you see that? It's now to fear because they don't want to hear him. But God knows something that is not known. For you to fear God, you need to move closer to him. Amen. Amen. For you to fear God, you need to constantly hear Him. We are human beings. If you are not moving in close communion with God, we tend to be doing things our own ways and we think we are serving God. And, 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 they are examples. Even when Jesus Himself came, they were still doing their own thing. They didn't recognize him as the Messiah. Why? They were so much in tune in their own ways of doing things. Am I talking to somebody here? Tati, what does it say? Go tell them to return to their tent. That's God saying to them. But you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws that was not there before. That was not what God wanted to do before. But because of the fact that they began to hear him, which will create that fear of God in them, you know, now God has to give them laws and bylaws and sort of decrees and all kind of laws to cause them to walk even with him. What does the New Testament scripture says about the laws? Anybody can paraphrase if you know? All the laws and the commands are so much in two ways. Yes, they are so much in two ways. Yes. The law itself causes people to sin. If there is no law, there is no sin. Isn't that so? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. It is because there is a law and you violate the law, you know, you see. You see what the law does. It's not that the law is not holy itself, 
but because of the human nature, the fallible nature of man, God knows that they cannot fulfill all this because it's impossible. You see, it is practically impossible. But that's what they demanded for. He has the, the best choice for them, but they said, well, we go for the lesser choice. Okay. Um, I, will, I will give you all the comments, the decrees and laws, so you have to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. That was what God says. You can see um, how people are changing the hand of God. What he wants to do because of the way people carry it, God has to change, modify it to suit them. He did it in love. And that's what's about God. He did everything he did in love. Now, I want to go to Jeremy 18 now. Deuteronomy 18, the same, um, uh, what do you call it? And I mean, there's so much, there's so much, the love of the Lord. You can see what we're doing here is trying to let us see where people have done mistakes all over the years. And this is what brought us to where we are. Jesus came to change the thing and we see it going on in the same way that what has happened in the past. Okay, from 16, I think 16 and 18. For this, for this is what you ask of the Lord your God at worry on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they said is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to the words that the prophet speaks in my name. Wow. Who was he talking about? Jesus. What did he say? Anyone does not listen. Listen. This is now. Are we hearing? Are we listening? You see? What do you say we do? It will help to account. Yes. So this verse is for Charlie and Jesus. This verse is written for Jesus, it's about him. <laughs> uh, and so the person is saying you obey God. Yes, that's God. Okay. <laughs> that's God speaking. I want to understand. So God for shining the sun. Yeah. Okay. This God now, this is Moses speaking here. So not the next, not the next problem to read. No, 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 no. He's talking about he was saying the prophet in terms of Jesus. This is Jesus now. He's talking about Jesus. Do we all understand that? Amen? Amen. Do we understand that? That it was something the prophet is talking about as Jesus here. Oh, yeah. huh? Who said that? So not Joshua. No. no. Among their bread and with them. Where did Jesus come from? Uh -huh. Yes. So you can see here 
the what the father wants is relationship. Really. Amen. What the father wants with his children is relationship. And if we don't have that relationship, we cannot know the father or not can we know Christ Jesus. We may say we know him. Yes, we are born again. There is no question about that. But we may not fulfill his purpose. Does that make sense? And again, it means that we have to be fighting tooth and nail until we get to the grave. What does that mean? If we don't know, what you don't know, you don't know. What he can tell you in the secret place when you're having communion with him, he's not going to tell you when you don't have time for him. Will he? Ah. See, God, God. he has made everything clearer to us. And I was asking myself, how come I didn't see all this all these years? At least if I know it, I will want to. Amen. Amen. How come that see this seems to me? How come I didn't see this? You may ask yourself that same question. God is love. Everything he did for us, even despite the fact that people have been known to be rejecting him, even in our own days now. Yet, he has not abandoned us. Yet, he has not said, look, I'm tired of these people. I, I just, I'm just tired. I don't want to waste my time on them anymore. <clears throat> don't forget that he is God. He can do anything. He can say, I'm done with these people. If he has to do that, who will question him? No one. You can see the type of love that God has for us. And that's why it's important for us to understand what God is saying to us. I'm going to move forward now. You have seen here, yeah, I've shown you what happened in, 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 in the book of the beginning, what happened with Adam and Eve, we have seen that how they rejected God, and we have seen now how the Israelites, who God wants to use to evangelize the whole world, how they too rejected to hear from God. It was like God was lamenting, Oh, I wish that they would fear me. So now, the question is about you and about me. Until now, what have you seen in the word of God? Where are you in this world that we are talking about? Sometimes I read the Bible and I was like, ah, and I talk myself to be a Christian. And I'm just discovering this. I scold myself. And I pray, Lord, help me. In fact, I ask God to forgive me. I don't even know this is there. And it's always been there. And I've been reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from Genesis to Revelation, you know. But you see, until when you begin to read with the Holy Spirit, it makes the difference. Isn't that so? Ah, wow. The word of God, their spirit and their eyes. The word is spirit and is life. The Holy Spirit breathe on the world. Bring us alive. That's why he's our teacher. 
I've been saying to us that when you want to read, read by the Holy Spirit, don't just read Bible. Read, Lord, I invite you. You'll be surprised. Honestly, you'll be surprised. Now, um, okay, as 13, 22, don't, you don't need to go to it because see what I've, I've written down here. Um, this is about David now. Let's hear what God says about David. And when he had removed him, that's Saul, he raised David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Do you see the qualification there? What was the qualification in this statement? To obey. To obey, yes. Before obeying, there's something. What does that mean to you? A man and after my heart is huge, it's important. And that's what we've been talking about. Your heart is your spirit. Your heart is your spirit. So if you are pursuing the heart of God, not the hand of God, that was what the Israelites were pursuing, the hand of God. Moses was pursuing God, wants to know God. That's why he said to him, that God, you, you said that you, you know me. And you said that I find favor in you. If I find favor in you, I want to see you. I said, ah, you have asked for, you know, a very huge thing. Because no man can see the eyes of God and leave. But God made a way for him to see him. Why? Do you think somebody was in no God would just say, I want to see you? I want to see. <laughs> I was like, who are you? <laughs> he said, I know those who are of mine, those who are mine. Here is God vouching about David in the New Testament. Not in the Old Testament because we didn't see anything like that. Right now, what we saw was ah, this man that was after man's God, he, he fornicated, Abi. Isn't that so? Is it fornicating of God or adultery? Sorry, adultery. So, so you can see God testifying that, and not only was he after God, he said, and he will do all, all my will. That means that David fulfilled his purpose. Isn't that so? Beloved, mm -hmm. you answer me. Yes. You see, what is more? What is it that we want? In fulfilling God's purpose, he was wealthy. You know, every one of us doesn't. In fact, we are kings. Anyway, and, and we are not only we are kings, we are God. Small G God. <laughs> What's that we say? As he is, so we are here on earth. If he is God over there, who are we here? And if we are God, we have no name. Your domain is his will for you. He has given you that authority, that power to carry out what he has called you to do. And in doing that, you have your sphere of influence, isn't it? Uh, 
I would not do like David. David pursued the heart of God. That was why, you know, when Saul was pursuing him, and he can say, ah, Lord, why? Why I'm serving you? That's what we say, isn't it? Why is this person pursuing me? To the extent that God put Saul in the hand of David, that if someone said, Now kill him, just give me the order. I will pin him down and not be because I know what we know. They are warriors, they know what they're talking about. What did Yes, God anointed Saul. God, he recognized that it was God that placed Saul there, even though he may be misbehaving. He has his trust in the Lord. Not one time, not twice, or three times that God placed him in his hand. That was the things for the week. I will not put my hand against God's anointed. I will not speak ill against someone that God has anointed. He's talking to us now. I will not condemn whom God has anointed. It's so easy for us to see what they have done. We are pointing fingers. And we are not even talking about ourselves. In fact, some people say when you point one finger, the remaining four comes to you. It's so easy to blame people. Oh, you're doing this. It's so easy. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know their story. You don't know what they've gone through. How good would it be if you just go along them and make them feel comfortable? Not to condemn them, but yet speak the truth in love. Would I not win that person back to the Lord? Oh, can't you see? What is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? We shout the glory and talk to myself now. We saw him, how God, even when they was like, wow, what is this? God didn't say anything against them. And if we are like him, we are supposed to do the same. But the point is that we can't do that because we are not in communion with him as we are supposed to. That is the issue we have. until we start having that communion with him as he has always wanted to. Prayer again is not a monopoly prayer that we pray. Isn't that so? We pray, it's like the monologue, what do you call it? Aha. Prayer is supposed to be one dialogue. We are so comfortable. I pray, 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 pray. I pray one hour. I pray two hours. I'll be there. I'll be shouting my head off. I'll be, no, you must do this. I'm not going to be commanding to do whatever I want him to do. I'm saying, commanding that, son, you're not listening to me. Son, you're not listening to me. That's 
That's not the way I, I operate. I feel that was what God was telling me. Okay, you think I do it by yourself? Go ahead and do it. I've written it in my book. I've told you how I want to be done. I've told you how I operate. If you want to know me, you have to find time for me. It is for all of us, not for some people. Go ahead, Toby. Pastor, that's way on prayer. Huh? Um, on prayer? Yeah, you said that you were you know, uh, praying and saying, Lord, please do this. And then you were saying, Lord, that God was telling you. So that's what I, I felt that that was what he was telling me. I didn't say he told me. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, I felt like, okay. You're asking for all this, you're asking for this, but you're not doing what I want you to do. See, there's some things that are huge and bigger than us that we cannot handle. It can only be done in him and through him. Say amen for that. Amen. So it is not, I know how to pray. Nobody knows how to pray, the Bible says. Oh, we're going to pray a word. The Bible says nobody knows. And we find ourselves, so we go on the line, pray. Yeah. I'm not saying don't pray. But God has given us the best way to do it. If we are people that hear God and listen to God, I will come together and say, yes, let us pray. As you're praying, and we are listening to what God is saying to us. And God is giving us feedback. We are here today discussing about something. If God has not been with us, he wouldn't have revealed to them, sister, to you what he saw. Isn't that so? Because we want to learn of him. We want to walk with him. We have seen from Genesis to where we are, to the earth, how God wants things done. The onus is now on us to begin to say, Lord, I am willing to. I want to. I am ready. And I want to say this before because I'm going to, the night section is going to be, we're going to go into it, uh, some things that, about it really. We're going to now go into um, uh, 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 Habakkuk. We're going to go into it because I realize there's so much we need to understand. Well, how do we get to where we are? What lesson can we learn from all this we've been talking about? Because if you don't know, you can't make that decision. And the decision you make is just for you and for you. I say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Amen. Amen. So it's 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 just I know we need to understand God something. Jesus is the full expression of God. Isn't that so? Yes. He is the full expression of God. So, and, and that's why I say that, yes, whatever I see my father doing is what I am doing. We've gone through that throughout the past weeks. Haven't we? Yes. Amen. Amen. So, we know that. He was in preparation for this. Maybe we have to go through some scripture again. I, I don't know. Okay, let's go to 1 Hebrew 12. There's something I want to show us there. I must forget about that. Hebrews 12. There's so much I have here, but it's just, it's not possible for us to go through. But uh, the lens is not possible. 
So I'm looking at time. Hebrews 12. What God says. Hebrews 12, 18 to 20. This is 26, yeah. Let me do this. If anybody has questions, we ask them. We we'll close for today. Uh, sorry for this afternoon until after dinner. From eighteen to eighteen to twenty-six. Now, this is uh, Paul speaking. Now, um, is it Paul? I don't even know who the person. I don't think it's Paul. I think the Bible does not say who wrote um, Hebrews. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I read, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, to gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come now to us now. Amen. This to us now. Say, but you and me, but you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels to Jehovah's assembly, to the church of firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Wow. See that there? See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. Who is he talking to? Us. He's talking to me. Amen. Amen. I'll read again 25. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refuse him, who want them on earth, on earth, how much less we, if we turn away from him, who wants us from heaven? Wow. At that time, he first shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake, shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. See, God wants to shake the shaking goods out of our lives. God is ready to shake anything that is not in his own way. And we are one that we see to it that we will not refuse him who is speaking to us. Are you hearing the voice so that don't refuse him? God is no respect of any person. God is no respecter of any person. Oh, am I going to say, Lord, I don't know. Would that be my defense? Can I understand? So that was why the, the person who wrote this scripture said, look, we should see to it that we do not fall foul of the grace of God. Do we think it's a small thing for God to want to share things with us? We have to 
be willing to want to come to this God for our benefits so that he may reign through us Without doing that, we are doing things on ourselves. I've said it before, I didn't have it now. I'm not sure if it's first point or second point. I said that. No, I was in the, in the, in the, what do you call it? In the, um, in the gospel, well, I think it's John. I think John 3. When, 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 when Jesus was confronting the Pharisees, he said, Yeah, you, you quote the scripture. You, you, you know what the scripture says. You pray about the scriptures. You confirm the scriptures. But you're not willing to come to me. You're not willing to come. And say, come. All you that are weary and everybody. And I'll do what? Rest. Rest. Rest for your soul. Rest from rat race. Rest from the burden that we are carrying on a daily basis. Because he has the answer. And he wants to tell us some big things before they happen. You know, the 7 Eleven that happened many years ago, you know, there's some people that God told them what was going to happen. Isn't that so? Even the one that happened here, the boss that was bombed. There are people who got told. What is happening in Amas, uh, in, um, in Israel and Gaza now? So there are some people that got told what the enemy was planning. Why? They dare to seek the heart of God. After my heart. Who loves me not because of what he wants to get from me? Who loves me for who I am? And because of his love for me, I decide to bless him. When you want true riches, you're not going to pray and be asking God for money. Wisdom to create wealth, it will give it. But it is in communion. Not just, oh, I want this, I want that. When will it stop? As God is doing one, before then, I have several other lists. Is that relationship? Are we using God? Beloved Lord, this is the time. It's not up to us. God is here. What we do with what we've had so far is very, very important. And I want to say this of the next section that we're going into. If you know that you move away from God, if you know that, well, I've been swimming in sin, I've been doing my own thing, and if you know, maybe I just go to church, I don't know God, Maybe to you, what I'm saying is just like Arabic to you. Maybe it doesn't make sense. It can only make sense when you come in when you're a child of God. Someone asked a question, was it yesterday or today? And it was like, oh, when you want to know something about it, I said, I thought I knew God. I said, I rode in the church. 
I go to church. I was a um, Christian in the church. I do not know God. Listen, it's not because your parents took you to church that will make you a child of God. Young people now, it's not because you are brought up in this Nagarian church. That's not what makes you a child of God. It is when you deliberately give your own life to Christ. What they did was good to raise you up in the Lord. But ultimately, you have to make the decision. Your parent cannot make that decision for you. So if you know you fall to that category now, I want to come forward and let us pray. You, you, you want to rededicate yourself to God? You say, I've been doing my own thing. Lord, help me. You need to rededicate your life. I want to come forward now. Why did you come? Huh? Why did you come? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Boyo, I said Boyo. Um, was Isabella, you are not here when I was talking. I know you've been to church, mommy and dad brings you to church. Is it also every Sunday, every time? But you see, I said that until when you yourself commit yourself to God, that's what matters. You know that? Have you done that? Um, Ayo, has you done that? What about um, I, I feel that to Christ. I'm going to Aaron. Huh? You did it. You did. Now, it's not just doing Bible study. They need to give their life to that. Okay, that's good. I need to be sure. Because it is important. Told you. Have you? Joseph, where is he? Have you given your life to Christ? You're not sure? He has. Mom, has he? If you're not sure, just come out. This is a serious issue. This is a serious issue. You see, all this we are talking about, it will just be like a story that you're hearing. Are you listening to me? It will just be like a story. But you see, it goes beyond that. Amen. So what we want you to do is to be, is, this is the time that you're starting a journey with God yourself. Your parents have done what they can do. Amen. They've tried their best, they bring you up so that you can now, from now on, start your own personal journey. Are you listening to me? Not what they say, but what is God saying to me that matters now. And God wants to reveal himself to each and every one of us. You know? So, and, and, and that is very, very important. Amen. Amen. So, and, and, and we're going to go into prayer now. Oh, before then. Oh, see, 
your life, yes. Okay. It is what God wants us to do. So that I can be Lord and God over our lives. It's not because your children, your parents are. You understand me? It's because you have to make that commitment with God. Lord, I, I surrender myself to you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. You understand me? Now, what it means that as you do that, by faith, whatever we do is by faith. Amen. So, and I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. Because if you're not ready for it, you're not ready for it. Huh? So, you have to mean it with all your heart. We are talking here, God knows everyone's heart. Isn't that so? Uh -huh. He knows if we make the right decision. Amen. And he knows when we are truly, you know, have that repentance and love and ready love. And what it also means is that we are going to live for him. I am going to pick up my Bible from tonight. I'm going to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite him into my open the Bible and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. And as I pray, Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, I want to hear from you. This is why I'm saying it, because when we're going to start next, uh, the next session we're going to start, it is important. Amen. So that we know that everyone is under the grace. Does that make sense? It's very, very important. So, are you all ready now? You ready? 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 So you can say, I'm going to say from my heart, and I want to follow me as I say it. Okay? Because our heart is very, very important. Amen. So we are, what you're saying, you're saying from your heart. Aliyah, have you given your life to Christ Jesus? Okay. Right time. Isn't that so? You see? 
prime time. That's what we're able to do now. So when I explain to them what it means is that you're asking God to come into your life. You are saying, Lord, it is no longer me. It is you. I give my life to you to live your life through me. Okay? So, and he's going to give you his spirit. You're going to accept it by faith. If it lies, there can be something dramatic. If you want, there can be nothing. You may not hear anything. But by faith, whatever we do, is we do it by faith. Okay? So, we are saying it by faith. And we expect him to come in by faith. And we know the way we do that, we are not a child of God. And it's also been like as I was explaining before you arrive, it means that I need to want to start reading my Bible, inviting the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want to know more of God. So as I open my Bible, help me, give me understanding, teach me how to pray. So when I want to pray, I want to pray with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that means you are inviting him. So you're not just doing things by yourself. That's what we've been talking about. That we seem to have been doing things by ourselves alone. Isn't that so? And it's not productive with God. So we want to start doing it God's way. Is that right with you? To do things in God's way. Not our own ways anymore. That's the reason for all this. So that it will help us in this journey. You now become like a baby before God that needs what we call milk of the spirit to grow. And as you begin to grow, you become a child, you become a toddler, the toddler become one. Before you know it, you're grown up. You all started one day. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say after me. Amen. Amen. And church, I just want us to begin to pray in the spirit. Amen. Just begin to pray for them that as they lead as, as they accept Jesus Christ because the greatest gift that anyone can have from God is the salvation of their soul. There is no any other gift that is greater than that. Amen. Amen. So God take this seriously. And the Bible says that angels are rejoicing over even one person that gave their life to Christ. Talkless of these seven people here. Is it that one? Yes. So let us pray. Father, you're going to say after me, please. You ready? Yeah. Father, Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I have been living my life the way I want. But today, I give my life to you. And I ask that you come into my life. That we no longer be me that is living. But it is you that is living your life by your Holy Spirit through me. Lord, I totally and from today say that you help me. I know I cannot do it by myself alone. But help me. Let your spirit come with power. Let your spirit come with fire. And purify me. And cleanse me. In the name of Jesus. And now accept the blood of Jesus. To purify me from all of my sins. And all of my iniquities. In the name of Jesus. As we begin to open my eyes so that I may ask for the forgiveness of my sins. But help me to live for you. And for you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name that you baptize him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Power and fire to come upon him. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. In the name of the Son. Amen. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, I ask you, 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you come upon him right now. Amen. Lord, that the Holy Spirit of God release over him. Amen. Lord, empower him to do your will. Father, we pray that your fire will burn away every struggle. Amen. Everything that is not of you in this life. In the name of Jesus, Amen. that from this day henceforth, that he may live for you. Help him for the spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we ask that your spirit will come upon um, uh, upon the um, to do okay. Let your spirit rest upon you. To do what I need. Let your Holy Spirit come upon you. My Jesus. Lord, use it for your glory. Be his best friend, Lord. Lead him in the way that you should go. In Jesus' name we pray. And by to walk the walk of Christ on earth. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the same, O oh God. Lord, for your son to yourself. Lord, thank you for our heavenly in the middle of it. Thank you for your grace and your love. Lord, we pray that the Spirit of God will rest upon you. Amen. Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Spirit, now empower him to do your will Amen. and give him the grace to be for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your daughter, your brother, and yet you're so grateful to come on Almighty for your love, your privilege, and your mercy. Lord, as we come in hand to your hand, we have that your spirit will rest upon her right now. Lord, our Anoint her with power and with fire. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I pray to say, O God, for Elwas, good one. Oh, gracious Father, let your spirit rest upon her. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Oh, gracious Father, bless her. Bless her to me. Abundantly, you know that by this magnificent, that you may give for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, O Lord, for Alia Sazima. Say, Mr. Wes. Okay. Sister is in front of me. Sorry. Thank you, Lord, for Mr. Wes. Lord, I pray that God will spend the rest of our time. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. In the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and I shall have for your grace, for your grace and your grace. Lord, help her to live for you. Believe yourself for her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Angels are rejoicing in heaven because you are giving your life to Christ Jesus. Now, sorry, I just want to say that they may begin to take the worldly things, the worldly way of doing things. That they may begin to walk with God. Yes. That God will reveal the sacred things to them. Amen. That even tonight at the sleep, the power of God will rest upon them. Amen. That God will do wonders. Amen. That God will reveal Himself to each and every one of them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, oh, Lord, pray Lord, Lord. Father, Lord. We just commit all of them to your hand. We thank you for what you have done. We're so grateful. We're so grateful, God. Oh, you love them so much. You care for them so much. And Lord, we thank you for love. We just commit them into your hand in this journey. 
open up all of my child of heart and to live for you. Oh God, we pray in the name of the Son Jesus Christ. Lord, that the Holy Spirit that you will be paramount in their lives, oh God, that they will not have one to enter without you. But Lord, help them. God, reveal yourself to them, oh God. Father, Lord, we ask you this, oh God. The first night that they join their lives, we have them and speak in their hearts. And so send them to love them. Lord, we thank you for it. We pray for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can go and sit down. Thank you. I think I'm not to have you to see you much later. To see you. To see you. To see you. To see you. I have to see you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. We are ever so grateful, Lord. Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen. So we are ending this section now. If you have any questions, we will come back after, um, after dinner. Amen. Amen. So... Shall we share the great in the house? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be in our life just now and forevermore. Amen. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 all the time, the Lord is good, amen, amen, amen.